uh, just talk a little bit more about addiction from my own experience yesterday. And I see a huge relate, not from my experience yesterday, from my own experience, following on from yesterday. <laughs> but um, there's a huge relationship I see between denial and addiction. So lots of you got a good taste of what AJ was talking about in terms of denial. It's where we just really don't want to see what's inside of our soul. One of, one of the main ways we use to support that place inside of us is by going into addiction. We, because God, in his beautiful, loving wisdom, is bringing us events all the time to help us see what's inside of us. But because we want to stay in denial... We go, how can I avoid this? How can I get a feeling that is, that's not scary or sad, but a happy one? I'll create an addiction. I'll create some relationships with people or my environment that help me avoid this strange stirring up thing that's happening as I walk through my life. So I see a big relationship between denial and addiction. And really, as you come out of denial, the first thing you're going to see is all the addictions that you've been using to support your denial. And, and I've had a few discussions with people privately about them feeling frustrated about, I'm not getting to my tears. I, you know, I know that grief is the healing emotion. I'm not crying for hours at a time. I just feel a bit, you know, like, how am I going to get anywhere on this path? And the truth is, for everyone on the planet, because we're all basically in some level of this, most of us in a deep level of it, the truth is when we start our real soul work, we are going to be dealing mainly with addiction. And that means we're not going to be crying causal tears. We're going to be crying, I want what I want tears. <laughs> this really hurts, this changing and becoming sensitive again. And so um, I, I always want to say to people, don't beat yourself up if you feel like you haven't like hit five causals in the last five days because... <laughs> Um, I see that as a culture that grows out there, everyone, because of some other emotional injuries inside of us, of not wanting to feel helpless, not wanting to feel hopeless, not wanting to feel like we're not getting anywhere. We all then start going, did you cry? How much have you cried today? Yeah, I think I hit a causal, you know, I was really deep, it was about my mum. You know, all this kind of language starts happening and we, we start, we want to feel like we're getting somewhere. But the truth is, in the beginning, we're just going to be looking at so much addiction. And it's going to be that feeling like you all just had when AJ just told you about two major things that are happening on the planet and how our own emotions support them. It's like a whoa feeling. And then, you know, you start getting used to seeing one level of, of the addiction and the denial. And then God brings you something else to show you like, whoa, there's even more in there. Like, there's so much I'm denying. And if we can get used to that, that kind of process and recognise that that is actually taking steps, that's the beginning of our soul work, then we're going to relax a lot more about this. Did you want to add something, babe? No. No. <laughs> yeah, so then we're going to get more relaxed about, about what's happening. And you can't actually start your real soul growth until you deal with addiction. And that... For me, for a long time, I really didn't like that truth because I was more happy to see... Remember how it, you know, we, we know how it all sits inside of us. There's grief right down there and we've heard it's the healing thing. And actually, when we do connect with grief, we can feel like, whoa, that's a relief. I feel changed person. That was good. So we, we start to think, okay, grief is where I've got to go and I'm, I'm a little bit more okay with that. But on top of grief is all our terror, and I'm going to call it terror because all of us have terror, plus fear. <laughs> and on top of that is where we create these things. Addiction, denial, and our anger comes into play. Like after, after AJ's discussion with uh, some of you last night, we went home and we could feel quite a bit of anger in spirits who were attached to you guys going, oh, we don't like that you've just exposed all this stuff in these people. We want, you to, we want them to stay in these places so we can keep control. So anger, anger is a part of this process and, th and that's something else I want to say to you that it's going to happen. <laughs> and most of us are judging these places so much 
we judge, uh, we judge the fact that, yeah, I do feel really angry with men. I do think it's, you know, I do want to have control over other men so they can't control me. That's, a, that's an emotion that exists in most women on the planet right now. And I'm going to keep my heart close to him because if I open it and he treats me badly, I'll hurt and I don't want to have that. So that's an emotion that most women carry. And most of us, we prefer to, no, I want to feel grief that dad hurt me. Because we can intellectually make the leap between that addiction and the fact that I've got some grief with dad and feeling like he wasn't there. So we all just try to hit this grief and not deal with the fact that actually I've got a huge addiction to maintaining control in my marriage. I've got a huge addiction to feeling like I'm kind of uh, powerful and in control as a woman. I've, the, all these addictions are what we have and I just want to stress it to you guys so much because I've tried to do it another way. I have tried. I have, I have gone, yeah, okay. Oh, and I've had a soulmate pointing it out to me. I've had God's laws bringing me so many examples in a week just to show me I actually want control here. I, I'm actually quite angry with men. And then I've gone, well, I know uh, anger, fear, under that's grief. If I just get to grief, that whole other pile will just be gone. It doesn't work that way. Because like AJ said yesterday, under emotion is emotion. And under that emotion is more emotion. And we can't, we can't even if we emotionally connect to the addiction and then intellectually go, ah, oh, this is about pain with dad, and then feel that emotion... It's never going to work. It's never going to work. We're going to have to feel that. Then when we've done that, we will start to feel that. It will start to happen. And if we're humble to that, then we'll start to feel grief. And we can't do it any other way. <laughs> and trying to do it another way has only created so much more pain for me in my life. And, and that's why I wanted to stress it to you guys. Because I've, uh, many of you have probably seen the sleep state discussion I gave. And that was all about me for, for three years recognising I have an addiction to not feeling powerless. I have an addiction to not feeling shame. I have an addiction to um, having control over, over my relationship and over men. And intellectually going, yep, I've got to deal with that. But really emotionally saying, I don't want to look at those things. I don't want to even acknowledge that they exist inside of me. I do not want them to be there. I judge myself if they're there. So I'm just going to... Emotionally, that's what was happening for me the whole time. Or I'd try to have a little cry about it or try to connect it. It was all intellectual and it didn't change my soul at all. And it only put me further in denial and I created a whole series of other events that caused me a lot of pain and a lot more shame and eventually brought me to the realisations of what was inside of me. But I could have done it a very different way. Could have done it in a way where I, I recognised my addiction in the first instance and I said, OK, my block here is that I judge this about myself. If I can just work through the judgement I have about myself, about these sexual issues, then I'm going to start to really work on this addiction and, and work on my desire to actually be free of it. Then I would just be in the place that I'm actually in now, which is actually experiencing fear about those things. And, and once I did that, I would not be acting in addiction or denial or causing more harm to my soul or to other people's souls. But because I judged it, because I thought, no, I can't see this about myself. I can't really be that bad a person. That was my judgment of it. I then created more and more events, and God had to bring me more and more events to help expose that inside of me. And that was because I wanted also to feel like I was getting somewhere. I felt I needed to be better than I was. I felt I had a role. And all these other emotions that I didn't want to face also. So there is so much power in just right now recognising maybe I'm not as evolved as I think I am. <laughs> maybe I'm living in huge amounts of denial and addiction because, hey, I live in the Western world. <laughs> it's pretty much geared around these two things. Our whole society is geared to help us remain in denial or addiction. So if I'm looking at that logically and realistically, I'm probably in a lot of denial and addiction. 
And then if I look at the people around me and I can see they've got pain in their lives about these things, perhaps I might have some addictions that are helping me avoid that pain. If we can get to that place emotionally and say, okay, addiction is where I'm going to have to start. Emotion is going to be beneath emotion, not thought. And if, I, if I'm just willing to look at addictions and work through these emotions of judgment I have at myself, then I start my soul work. Then it begins, not before. Francis.